Hi, everybody. Today, Jamilia from RFR Candy with me. Hi, Jamilia. Hi, Renata. How are you today? Good, thank you. And you? Um, good as well. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about RFR Candy and about yourself? Um, sure. Uh, my name is Jamilia. I handle partner marketing activities at Referral Candy. And Referral Candy is an e-commerce tool or an app uh, that helps to set up and automate referral programs uh, for your e-commerce store. Okay. And uh, first of all, let's start uh, with difference between referral marketing and affiliated mar marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So referral programs or referral marketing usually offers uh, your existing customers like a small referral reward uh, for sharing about your brand. Uh, so, and the referred friend also gets like a small discount or like a small perk uh, when they complete the purchase. On the other hand, uh, affiliate marketing, it happens when you actually partner out with either a content creator or like an influencer to create sell, uh, sales oriented content. And affiliates usually make like they make a commission on the sales generated uh, through their content and their audiences don't get a discount in that case, but like instead they use an affiliate link to support that uh, content creator. And when it comes to like referral programs, usually you're rewarding your existing customers for sharing about their positive experiences about your brand. Uh, and on that, uh, again, when it comes to affiliate marketing, you're paying for the content uh, creators, whether it's reviewers, blog bloggers, like YouTube creators, podcasts, um, to create marketing content around your brand. Um, and both of them, they do have different benefits and different like pros and cons. So when it comes to pro marketing, um, the, it's really great for like authentic uh, type of word of mouth. So it does create sales. And since, you, uh, since you're usually asking customers that are happy about your brand already um, to share about your um, store, about your brand, um, there is that personal connection because those people they already have used your brand they have that personal connection with your um with your products or with the brand uh so that makes it easier for them to share about the brand and talk about it like in a positive manner uh and usually referral programs are also very easy to set up however on the other hand like on the disadvantages side it's a little bit less scalable than the affiliate programs because if you can actually buy or like pay to the influencers to talk about your product, you can't directly buy more customers. So usually the more customers you have, the more successful your referral program will be because there is a bigger customer base to talk about your brand. Um, but on the other hand, affiliate programs, they're perfect for creating marketing content and usually um, that content you like can be repurposed many and many times uh, after afterwards so technically you're incentivizing both like whether it's an affiliate or your current customers uh, so they become the salespeople for your brand uh, but it just depends on like whether you have a big enough customer base to go for referral programs or if you actually want to pay somebody for creating content about your brand so again it just depends on the needs of your business which one might be better for for your store so, yeah. i understand it uh, and mm -hmm. uh, you said that there are different types of referral programs. Can you mention a, a few of them? Um, I mean, it's not like different types of uh, mm -hmm. referral programs, but more different types of incentivizing your customers okay. uh, for talking about your brand. So whether it's a discount, like let's say you get a $10 discount, you can do percentage discounts. You can also incentivize them with uh, free products on their next purchase. Uh, free shipping is also a really good case. And again, depending on the niche, you can also offer them a cashback. Uh, so let's say if you're selling mattresses, then probably your existing customer wouldn't want to buy another one in the coming years. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of offering them like another discount, you can offer them a cashback. So let's say if one of their friend comes and purchases using their referral link, you can offer them like $50 um, as a reward for referring their customer. Uh, so again, it really depends on your brand, on your um, on the industry that you're selling in uh, and on what, like, and how you want to incentivize your customers. 
I understand. And um, how referral programs can help e-commerce businesses? Uh, I would say there are a couple of different ways how uh, e-commerce businesses can benefit uh, from having referral programs. So number one thing is usually uh, like using referrals as an acquisition channel, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a case for many, many years. Um, so with referral programs, you can actually own your acquisition process without, without depending too much on like external factors like, for example, pay debts. Uh, and you can also have control over how and when your customers are being asked to talk about your brand. Um, so um, talking about like paid ads, um, it's been like, I think the cost for paid advertising has been rising for a few years already and it's not going to stop anywhere uh, or anytime soon. So um, like referral marketing actually has a lower cost per lead than other channels as well. So you can utilize it to acquire new customers. But on the other hand, uh, you can also use it to incentivize customer retention because many like online businesses that have been switching their focuses from acquiring new customers to actually retaining old ones because everybody knows retaining an old customer is more cost efficient uh, than acquiring a new one. And you can uh, like, there is already that established trust that you can utilize in order to like support that relationship between your brand and the customer and uh, increase their average order values, their lifetime values um, that they can bring to your brand. And on top of that, like organic referrals, they also build that trust and credibility, um, which again has a really massive uh, influence over the decision-making of like new customers. So let's say if you, um, if you see an ad online about a brand selling lipsticks, you wouldn't be that inclined to go and check out, check it out. But if, uh, like, if your friend says, talks about the brand, talks about the lipstick, how great it is, how color, like lasting it is, how hydrating it is for the lips, then you will be more inclined. So again, it has that trust factor and sales, um, like usually your customers, they don't say, sound like salespeople. So again, um, you would be more inclined towards actually completing the purchase. Uh, and uh, as mentioned before, referrals are also really great for customer retention. Um, so like referral marketing actually can help you to increase uh, repeat purchase rate uh, as referred customers. They usually um, have like about 30 to 40 percent higher mm -hmm. customer retention rate than regular customers. Okay, and maybe you can share some interesting examples of referral uh, programs in e-commerce. Uh, I think every brand actually experiences like referral marketing and at some point or like in at some scale at least. Um, so if we're talking about something that's very common to us, like if you're using Uber, uh, you can see like there is a button that says like invite a friend or if you're using any like food delivery service, they also do that. Uh, my personal favorite ones are usually uh, related to nutrition, like complete nutrition brands, because it's really nice to see how, um, how people talk about them, how much benefits they uh, give to people. So let's say if I don't have time to eat or I don't have time to eat healthily, I don't have to uh, go for the fast food. I actually can eat uh, like good complete nutrition meal mm -hmm. uh, by buying from one of those complete nutrition brands. Um, so we have a few in the market, depending again on your uh, on your uh, on your location on your um, on the place where you live. So let's say if you're in US, it's Soylent. If you're in UK, it's Huel. If you're in Czech Republic, it's Mana. Um, and they, all of them, they do have really interesting referral programs. Like they, they give to both uh, like the existing customer and the person that they invite. Um, and it's really interesting to see how referral programs can also be utilized for subscription brands. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. And uh, what are the key elements of successful uh, referral program? And how do you see the future of referral program, referral marketing? Um, okay. 
Uh, so I think there are a few elements. Uh, all of them are probably as equally important as the other one, uh, starting with like sizable customer base. Mm -hmm. uh, because technically for referral programs to be successful and for you to see good return on investment on the referral program, you need to have at least, let's say, 200 orders per month um, because that is the foundation for your referral program. Like if you don't already have existing customers to talk about your brand, then of course, no referral program would help with that because you don't have that uh, base yet. Uh, but let's say if you have around like 500 to 1000 orders every month, it's very likely that you already do have referral, uh, like referrals coming through. You just don't know about them yet. Or, uh, and that's a really good time to start automating the process. Um, and like to get more insights on how your customers are actually talking about your brands, uh, where they're sharing on which channels and, uh, how do they talk about it? Um, another thing is, again, having a referral, referable product. Uh, so same stuff, like maybe they're solving a very specific problem, like I don't have time to eat proper meals, but I do want to stay healthy. In that case, I'll go to a complete nutrition brand. Or maybe the product is innovative or interesting in some way. Maybe they have a really great, uh, great um brand story and the ethics. So for example, think about Tom's, how they were, uh, they're technically like operating in a very competitive fashion and apparel industry, but yet they were able to uh, stand out from the crowd because they had that messaging that they will give one for one mm -hmm. uh, pair of shoes uh, for every child in need. Uh, yeah, so if your customer can actually recognize what makes your brand unique or special or different, better than your competitors, um, then it will be easier for you to explain to them why they should share about it. And they will also, it will also make it easier for them to share about your brand. Um, and again, ab about the brand story. So um, uh, again, like mentioned, uh, if, the brand, uh, if your brand has a shareable brand story or shareable uh, idea, um, that will also help to make your referral program successful because, for example, like one of the example, uh, one of the merchants that we have at Referral Candy is called Branch Basics. So they're operating in cleaning supplies industry. And I personally resonate re really like a lot with the brand because I am allergic to like harsh cleaning mm -hmm. chemicals. Um, so their brand store resonates with me as a consumer. Uh, so they do have initiatives to like encourage people to remove toxic cleaning products from their households. And that strategy worked really well for them because uh, the more they've been educating their customers about like the benefits of eco-friendly cleaning products or about the um, uh, about the bad experiences they had with like regular cleaning supplies, um, the more they've been able to like grow their referral base. And at the end, they've actually generated over like one, one and a half million dollars in sales. Um, yeah. And usually it's like over like about 10% of their monthly sales. It comes from new customers that have been referred by their existing customers. So again, brand story is also very important um, as well as like shareable customer experience. Mm -hmm. So just think about the last time somebody recommended something good to you, like whether it's a book, restaurant, Netflix show, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe like a place to stay uh, for a vacation. Uh, usually like we make those recommendations because we enjoyed the experience. Like you wouldn't have a friend who would recommend you something that they didn't enjoy. Like that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and another thing is probably visibility for your referral program to be successful. People need to know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to make sure that your referral program is accessible and easy to share. So the easier the program is to discover, the more people will, uh, the more likely and more people will convert to become active um, program members. Um, so yeah, so like for that, you can actually utilize like different referral widgets, whether it's a pop-up or like a post-purchase um, pop-up that's like usually post-purchase is the best mm -hmm. time to actually ask people to refer somebody to your brand. Um, and another important factor is the reward itself, because again, no size fits all approach in this case. 
Uh, depending on your business, depending on your customers, on the frequency of purchases, you might need to like test and try different types of rewards to see which one resonates the best with your customers. Um, yeah, and make sure that uh, that refer uh, that reward that you're offering them is actually something attractive, so they're more likely to refer someone to your brand. Okay, and and then the second part of the question, which is the future of the referral marketing, how do you see that? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I understand. That. Maybe yeah, you usually, have some thoughts. yeah, uh, usually it's a little bit hard to predict or like mm -hmm. uh, assume anything in the future because it does tend to backfire. Um, but generally, I think uh, more businesses will try to diversify their customer acquisition channels. So again, because the pay debts are getting more and more expensive. Businesses are trying to find other ways to drive traffic to their stores, to drive new revenue, uh, and referrals could be a, bit, a good solution for that. Um, so wider acquisition of referral programs, um, as well as, um, again, as, as it was mentioned, uh, not my thoughts, but probably something that I took from uh, Shopify's Future of E-commerce report, mm -hmm. it does say that um, businesses will focus more on customer retention than customer acquisition. Uh, so let's say um, you do need to have different strategies in place for the post-purchase um, to make sure that your customers do come back to your store to complete another purchase, that it's not one-off time uh, that they've made, um, that they bought something from your store. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I do think that uh, in the future, we'll probably see a combination of different referral programs together with affiliate. Um, if, like affiliate programs or like influencer campaigns, all of those can be combined together and utilized to drive further traffic and further sales for every commerce store. So uh, com uh, omni channels, you know, like doing uh, different yeah. things, not just focusing on one. I totally agree with you. Um, and thank you very much for all those informations about uh, referral uh, programs and, and referral marketing. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamilia, for today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Renata. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.